Welcome everyone, my name is Alessandro Ruggero. I'm the director of the Istituto Italiano di Cultura in Toronto. I'm very happy and, and hard to be here and present this uh, webinar that we are presenting in collaboration with the Italian Embassy in Canada, with the Italian Trade Agency in Canada, Ufficio Agenzia ICE, and with the Istituto Italiano di, di Cultura. The occasion to present this webinar is the Festival dello Sviluppo Sostenibile, ASVIS, uh, this, the Italian uh, Sustainable Development Festival is a festival that has been uh, running in Italy for several years and this year we'll decided to organize several uh, initiatives all around the, the, the world basically carried out by the by the Italian diplomatic missions by the Istituto di Cultura, the embassies, the consulate and, uh, and so on. Uh, for today's webinar we decided to invite uh, an host from, uh, from Italy and our guest is uh, Ulrich Santa, director of the, of the um, Agenzia Casa Clima, Clima House Agency. I will tell more about the Clima House Agency. It's an agency mm -hmm. anyway uh, devoted to, to um, create a framework and to support uh, the, the um, <clears throat> uh, architecture, architects, architecture system and, and um, industries to pursue the sustainability in architecture. Um, and we have with us Umberto Berardi, full professor at Ryerson University, Faculty of Architecture. I'm very, very mm, honored to have the presence of uh, His Excellency Ambassador of Italy to Canada, Claudio Tafuri, who will give uh, a few remarks. Uh, the, all the initiative has been conceived and developed together by the Instituto, the Italian Trade Commission and the Embassy. And, um, and so I'm really glad that we can have the ambassador to give us some remarks. Please, ambassador, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being with us today. Today's webinar is part of the 2020 edition of the Sustainable Development Festival organized by the ACSBS, its partner and supporters. The festival is a well-established event in Italy, and this year for, for its fourth edition, has extended the some of initiative globally. The aim of the festival is to raise awareness and, the, and to spread innovative ideas and projects in the field of environment <clears throat> and economic sustainability, which are particularly relevant to a country like Canada, which is at the forefront of the global action in the fight against climate change and towards environmental sustainability. Canada, though, is not alone in this effort. Italy, on, on its part, has a long-standing commitment towards sustainability and the implementation of action aimed at tackling climate change. Our environmental policies and goals are in line with the Paris Agreement, the UN Agenda 2030, the European Green Deal, and the EU Green Recovery Plan. And uh, do not forget the, our co presidency with the UK for the COP26 in 2021. Now let's go back to more practical things. Speaking of sustainability, we are certainly aware to be dealing with a world that has many implications, not only in regards to the environment, but also with the economy and society as a well. whole. By digging the various facets of the term, today we will be focusing on the segment of sustainability architecture. Uh, this particular uh, aspect has been identified as main topic for discussion, not only because it is uh, an area of expertise for which Italy has a lot to say, mm -hmm. but also because it applies widely and with a very substantial impact in the choices we make <clears throat> sorry, during our everyday life. And indeed, if the current pandemic has told us something, is that we need to invest in models for economic development that are not only sustainable, but also focus on individual well-being. Mm -hmm. Sustainable architecture fit uh, this model perfectly, if you want, seeking to minimize the negative environment impacts of buildings by efficiency and moderation in the use of materials, energy, development space, and ecosystem at large. But uh, what is truly interesting about this whole theme that we'll be discussing today is that, is that sustainability in architecture is good not only for the environment and for the individuals, but also for businesses. When governments establish policies to build in a, a sustainable way, business find incentives to rethink themselves and thrive while not harming the planet. Similar incentives can be given to individuals in order to improve the energy efficiency of their homes, thus creating a virtuous circle where everybody wins. 
The Director General of Casa Clima, Ulrich Santa, is an agency based in the Italian region of Fontino Alto Adige, and is in charge of the certification of energy efficiency, will certainly tell more about this. So I will leave the floor to him after, and there is, is, we will be able to discuss it at greater detail. But before leaving the floor, allow me to make a final remark on Italy's peculiar position on this field due to unmatched history in, our, in architecture. When we talk about sustainability, historical building, historical heritage, are both a challenge and opportunity. Of course, they were built on the basis of urban architecture models that are very different from those to, who apply today, uh, but this does not mean that they cannot be adapted and made, for example, more energy efficient. We need to be more actively involved in this in Diego, and we must accept the challenge to invest in it. So to allow our history and our past to be fully integrated thanks to our unbeatable skills in the field as a part of sustainable, friendly future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you for the eloquent introduction, eloquent remarks, and uh, for the vision as well. I, I totally agree, I think it's, and I'm sure both Umberto Berardi and Ulrich Santa will uh, agree on the importance of an architectural heritage and an architectural tradition uh, in building up uh, a future of sustainability and mm -hmm. uh, more friendly and well, I mean, favoring on, in well-being architecture. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank so. you. Now to um, Ulrich Santa and uh, Umberto Berardi and uh, Casa Clima Clima House. Uh, so as I was saying, I won't say much about Clima House because uh, I'm sure Ulrich Santa will say, will say more, will have the opportunity to, to present all the activities. I uh, just want, would like to mention and, and to stress again, as the ambassador was, was also <clears throat> mentioning the fact that um, Casa Clima is, um, is an agency by the autonomous province of uh, Bolzano, and um, which is, I mean, the, the, the focus is on creates uh, um, a framework and a certification, uh, a certification system to to push and to and to encourage encourage uh, all the industries that works on architecture and constructions to go, to move toward uh, efficiency and sustainability. Ulrich Santa is, became managing director of the public energy agency Climate House, so Clima House uh, Casa Clima in 2012, and. Uh, <clears throat> For seven years, uh, was the Office of ICT, Information and Communication Technology and ITS, Intelligent Transport uh, System and Telematics Department of an Italian motorway operator. Prior to this, uh, he ran his own software engineering and uh, automation technology business uh, with a particular focus on building technology, monitoring measurements and control applications. Dr. Santa graduated with a computer engineering degree from the Technical University of Vienna, and he received his PhD PhD degree from the Bochum University of Natural Resources and Life Science of Vienna, where he also worked as a lecturer for several years. In 2005, Dr. Santa was granted the Klaus Fischer Innovations Prize für Technik und Umwelt. He has published over 70 scientific papers, as well as numerous other articles within the area of sustainability and energy efficiency. He gained experience in several international research projects from 1999 to 2003. Dr. Santa was technical secretary of the FIB, Federation Internationale du Beton, task group 5.1, monitoring and safing, safety evaluation of existing concrete structure. In 2015, Dr. Santa was nominated coordinator of action group 9, the macro regional EU strategy for the Alpine region, focusing on promoting energy efficiency and the production and use of renewable energy in the Alpine region. So it's a I'm sure Dr. Santa will be will provide us with a lot of <coughs> interesting uh, hints into sustainability in architecture. And now to Dr. to Professor Berardi. Professor Berardi is an old friend of the Instituto as well, and the embassy is in Canada from already several years, and is a professor of building science and the director of the BTOP lab at Ryerson University in Toronto. Dr. Berardi has been appointed Canada Research Chair in Building Science for the period 2020-2025. Dr. 
Dr. Berardi has an extensive publication record, including 120 peer-reviewed journals, 120 international conference papers, and five books. Is very, very uh, active in uh, not only in his uh, teaching career, but also as an organizer of um, conferences and, and meeting both in Canada and uh, Italy, and I think uh, also in the, in the US. So I um, invite now Ulrich Santa and Umberto Berardi to, to join me, to turn on the, the mics and turn on their cam as well. Good afternoon to everybody. Here we are. So yeah, welcome, okay. now I leave it to you. I just would like to remember to our attendees that they can, uh, they can uh, participate in the conversation using the Q&A tool at the that they can find at the bottom of the screen. We can uh, receive the questions and uh, Umberto Berardi will lead the conversation with uh, director Ulrich Santa. And after that, uh, he will be also checking the questions and there will be space for and time for answering your questions so enjoy i'm sure you will enjoy the conversation please umberto and ulrich santa and the floor is yours thank you very much so good afternoon to everybody uh, thanks uh, the instituto for putting together this very nice uh, meeting uh, and thanks actually for casa clima for you know the availability to present to canadian friends and follow uh, the activity that they've been doing in Italy. And hopefully this afternoon, we will try to actually fill the gap and match opportunities between these two countries. The topic today, as we just heard, is about sustainability in architecture. And we're gonna look at the experience of Casa Clima. Uh, I will be just the moderator of today. Uh, and I will actually just uh, present uh, Dr. Santa just by giving you uh, a new perspective of what we're gonna see today. As you probably are aware, uh, uh, Casa Clima is mainly operating in Northern Italy, but has been trying to do internationalization. And within this actually trend, more, uh, what we are gonna look at today is the opportunity to match the experience of Casa Clima with Canadian building sector. Now, when we see the Canadian building sector and we are looking at uh, Toronto, for example, uh, or any other major city in Canada, what we see is a very different landscape of buildings. So in North America, we are using to see cities with high-rise buildings, a lot of construction, a lot of prefabrication, a lot of modular construction. Um, and uh, if you can just go forward with the presentation, I want to uh, just give uh, a bit of the photos that show the kind of landscape of Canadian cities and Canadian construction. Specifically speaking, when we see uh, North American city, what we often find interesting coming from Italy is the quantity of our rise construction that we keep uh, seeing moving forward. Um, a city like Toronto, for example, has been expanding rapidly. We see a lot of uh, you know, towers coming up every day. Uh, the simple city of Toronto has currently over 100 uh, uh, cranes and is basically really considered the city uh, with the highest number of crane in North America by far overpassing all the other cities. So without really a kind of getting too much time, I want to introduce to Ulrich and Dr. Santa will present to you how we can learn in this landscape of high rise construction and modern buildings and high rise uh, glazing towers, what uh, the Canadian uh, people can actually match with uh, people from Northern Italy. Dr. Santa, the floor is yours. Yes, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Alessandro and uh, Umberto, for uh, the kind introduction and for the invitation. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to present uh, Casa Clima. Um, before we go to intermediate race, um, let me spend a few words on who we are and what our mission is about. So um, the Casa Clima Agency is configured as a public body, as an independent public body. We are uh, based, uh, you already heard that, uh, in the province uh, of uh, Bolzano, uh, which is the northernmost Italian region and bordering on Austria and bordering on, uh, on Switzerland. Um, here in this region, we act also as a regional uh, energy agency. The two main linguistic groups in our region are Italian and German, so for this reason, our agency officially takes uh, a bilingual denomination, Klima House, Casa Klima. Uh, I would say for the sake of simplicity, uh, I will uh, talk only about uh, Casa Klima today. Um, 
So on a regional level, um, we are dealing with everything that has to do with energy transition, energy efficiency and uh, renewables on a national and I would say uh, more and more also on an international level, we are renowned for being uh, a competence center for sustainable building standards and building certifications, including also building product certification. And this is uh, also our core business in this field. Uh, we are also market leader in uh, Italy. Um, another very important pillar for us uh, is the knowledge transfer, is education and training. Um, of all the involved uh, uh, actors uh, in the construction sector of designers, of craftsmen and uh, practitioners uh, in order to create and to disseminate uh, the knowledge and the skills necessary to put them into practice what we are uh, talking about uh, today. The same thing uh, applies um, to the demand side, if you like. We are working also a lot in the area of uh, communication, of awareness raising, and, um, and sensitizing people to these issues. And finally, we have, we have our um, research and development activities to update and to further develop our standards. So as you might uh, probably know, we've already heard it uh, from the ambassador in Europe, we have a clear political uh, target for the decarbonization of our economy. Uh, in all sectors, in the private and the public sector, in the building sector, in industry and in transportation. Um, so far, the goal uh, was an 80 percent reduction of CO2 emissions by 2050. Now we have um, a new commission and we have uh, the new Green Deal. And uh, that means that we have also a new target. And the new target is to become even uh, climate neutral by 2050. So this is... Uh, our European framework, and then we have downstream, of course, all the national and uh, regional strategies to break down these European goals into concrete implementation measures. And the building uh, industry is a key sector for the achievement of these goals. It is, uh, as you know, one of the biggest consumers of energy and raw materials, and it is uh, also one of the largest sources uh, of waste and of emissions. Uh, we know that uh, approximately 40% of our total energy consum consumption can be attributed to the construction sector. And in a few other sectors, we can find a similar potential to reduce our energy intensity and to reduce also our CO2 emission. Um, and additionally, as in a few other sectors, we can do it already today and we can do it also in a cost efficient manner. This is very important. So, and this is also why the European uh, directives, the energy performance of building, uh, buildings directives uh, have introduced over uh, the last 18 years concrete minimum requirements to improve energy performance of new but also for existing buildings. Uh, our region was the first one in Italy to implement these European requirements in its building code. So we introduced in 2005 uh, Casa Clima Class C. We will see uh, later on what is meant by that as a minimum standard for new buildings. Uh, then in 2011, we passed to a Class B, and in 2017, we uh, passed to a, a Class A. So um, thus, we have anticipated the European nearly zero energy building by introducing the standard four years earlier than required by the European uh, directives. And outside our region, because the claim is a voluntary quality seal for general construction quality and a sustainability certification. So the question is, at least in Europe, uh, the question is uh, not whether we do these things, uh, but how we do them. And that's actually the point. Energy standards and energy certification often show to be uh, a paper tiger. And uh, we very often have a large gap between theoretical and real performance of our buildings. Uh, this has, for instance, uh, been uh, documented in a study done by Lega Ambiente. Lega Ambiente is the largest, the most important Italian environmental organization. Uh, they performed a study where they showed that out of 10 buildings examined did not yield expected results. And to our satisfaction, uh, all the Casa Clima buildings uh, they uh, analyzed showed, uh, fortunately, to perform very well. So where's the difference? The difference uh, is to be found in the approach because the Klima is first of all a quality assurance process that aims not only at energy performance but at high construction quality in general. This is important uh, and this quality process supports a building project in all its stages from the first calculations to the construction work 
uh, up to the final acceptance of a building. And this uh, supervisory process is carried out by our agency, by the Catatima agency. So the certificate handed uh, over at the end is not a self-declaration made by the designer or made by the construction company, but it is proved by an independent uh, third, uh, in our case, also public party. Uh, and this is what creates true quality in my eyes and uh, what creates also trust uh, in our certification. So thanks, Dr. Sanda. Since actually you're touching this topic of the quality insurance process, can you uh, specifically for the audience in Canada, tell us a bit about how the quality is typically assessed and what's the process, what is the check that you typically do during the design, the construction? Mm -hmm. Of course I can do so. Um, so let's have a look, a uh, closer look at this uh, as a climate certification process. Um, like uh, everywhere else, also in the um, Casa Clima project, uh, the basis for quality is laid uh, with an accurate planning uh, of all the construction details, uh, with all the necessary building modeling and calculation and uh, simulation work. Um, the first step that has to be done is uh, always to minimize the energy losses. Um, this means to uh, make sure that we have a good building envelope and the good building envelope is always also the basis for uh, aided durability of the building, but also for high comfort levels. High comfort levels during both winter and summertime, you know, in Italy we have uh, different uh, climate zones uh, from the north to the south. So we are considering both uh, aspects. And all this is of course uh, related to the building physics and the wide range also of technical aspects. I won't go too much into the details. You and Bertha know very well all these uh, concepts. So we have to consider the thermal insulation, for instance, we have to avoid uh, thermal bridges. Uh, we have to look at the quality of the components of windows and the doors. Um, for um, good comfort levels during summertime, we have to look that uh, after the uh, thermal storage capacities, for instance, of the used construction materials um, for the shadowing systems and much more on the on the passive side you see here and on, on this slide. And once I have minimized the energy demand, then in a second step, I have to look uh, on the active components of the building. So we're talking about all the HVAC appliances, all the appliances necessary for heating, cooling, for ventilation. I have to look uh, at the lightning, the building automation, and so on. And of course, also on how I can cover the remaining, the residual energy demand uh, from uh, renewal, uh, renewable energy sources. As in any other quality system, also we have several instruments and tools to support uh, the planner in this uh, process. One central instrument uh, is our uh, software tool, is our Procasa Klima software for the design and for the evaluation of the energy performance of the building. Uh, this tool has an onboard, um, an integrated dynamic simulation engine for analyzing, for instance, uh, the comfort levels, eventual discomfort situations. This tool allows us to evaluate the sustainability quality source of the project according to uh, our um, Casa Clima Nature standard we will see uh, later. Uh, this software, this Procas Clima software is free. You can download it from our website, but th there are also commercial third-party vendors that uh, integrate the, um, the interfaces and the functionalities needed for the Casa Clima certification in their own software. Here on the right side of this uh, slide, uh, you see an example of how this is done, for instance, by uh, Logical Soft. Um, then we have uh, our technical uh, guidelines, of course, which contain all the technical requirements to be met for the single certification schemes. Uh, we developed, for instance, also a catalog of uh, compliant construction notes. And this catalog contains all the numerical verifications and proofs for the most common materials and construction systems. Also, this is a very useful uh, tool for the designers. Um, crucial, however, in um, our certification process uh, or um, the quality audits we're doing on construction sites. So all projects without exceptions are audited on site during construction. And we have certified over the years more than 18,000 projects. And we can say that the key to real sustainable buildings is for sure to be found in ensuring a high execution quality. So what we have seen is that the difference is mainly 
done there, not so much in the optimization of the third or fourth uh, decimal place in the, in the calculations. These calculations are important, of course, but we know that most problems uh, that have an impact uh, on the quality, most problems on the construction side are to be found, uh, let's say, before and not uh, after the, the decimal point. Uh, here you see some of the checks we are performing, uh, for instance, have um, all new constructions uh, go through a final blower door test uh, to verify the air tightness and the performance of the building envelope. And then we have a series of other uh, tests uh, that are foreseen um, by our sustainability protocols. So um, before uh, I mentioned uh, the Kazakima classes, now uh, let's have a quick look on how the classification uh, is done. So we use uh, three indicators for the classification. The first one describes the efficiency of the building envelope expressed as you see here in kilowatt hours per square meter and year. The second one describes the overall energy performance in terms of residual primary energy demand uh, expressed uh, in this case in uh, CO2 equivalents per square meter in here. And this indicator describes therefore also implicitly the coverage by uh, renewables. And the third one regards then an eventual sustainability standard uh, we will see uh, later. Of course, uh, our guidelines um, contain a lot of other limit values and requirements that have to be uh, met but that are not used for classification. So for the classification, we're using only these three indicators. So um, these are the main elements, uh, let's say, of the, of the um, Casaclima certification process. What in the end matters is, uh, however, not so much the procedure, but the result of this process. And the result uh, has to be a high planning and construction quality. Uh, the result has to be high comfort levels, as I said uh, before, during both winter and summertime. Um, the result uh, is a sustainable building with low energy needs, with low CO2 emissions, but the result is also a robust, a resilient building. Um, we always say a nearly zero energy building is, uh, of course, fine, but first of all, we want it to be a nearly zero problem building. Also, this has to do with uh, sustainability in my eyes. Thanks, Dr. Santa. Um, I wonder if you can explore a bit uh, the, the possibility to apply your approach and your system to different typologies of buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. Do they typically apply only to houses, so also commercial buildings are an asset of your agency? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Yes, um, over the years, um, we have a strong, uh, seen a strong growth and uh, development of the Casa Clima system, but also an evolution of the certification schemes, uh, scheme itself. Um, the first uh, Casa Clima has been certified in, in 2002. Uh, as I said before, to this day, we have certified more than 18,000 uh, buildings, new buildings, retrofitted buildings. Uh, here uh, you see some examples which uh, should also illustrate uh, the many ways, materials, uh, the different construction systems uh, Casa Clima can be uh, realized with. And uh, of course, we um, are always very pleased to have also big names among the certified projects like uh, the one of Renzo Piano. Um, we certified uh, an entire district at Trento uh, or Zaha Hadid or um, Martini, Rossi, Bulgari, and, uh, and others. Uh, but also the certification scheme itself evolved constantly uh, over time towards a wider focus uh, on sustainability matters. Today, um, our um, sustainability schemes allow us to describe and to certify also uh, structures according to a wider set of sustainability criteria. We developed, for instance, um, the Casa Clima Nature Standard for the application in residential buildings. Uh, energy performance is here only one out of six evaluation fields. Um, as you probably all know, we spend on average 90% of our time indoors, at home or at school uh, or at work. And for this reason, this uh, nature standard uh, considers also aspects uh, linked to uh, the indoor quality, to the indoor air quality, to acoustics, uh, or to the use, uh, for instance, of natural daylight. 
uh, and on the other side, on your hardware side, uh, is done, for instance, a life cycle analysis. You also have to use construction materials in order to determine their ecological footprint. Um, today, in a, in a Klima house, in a Casa Klima building, uh, the energy consumption over the whole lifetime of the building, and the gray energy, that is the energy that is stored in the materials, are about the same. So therefore, we are now focusing more also on these, uh, let's say, uh, hidden aspects of, uh, of uh, a building and, 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 and its sustainability. Um, yes, and then we have um, a couple of other uh, indicators, as for instance, ground sealing, reducing the consumption of water, uh, and so on. Here we see uh, a prominent application of this standard. Uh, McDonald's Italy decided to build all new McDrives according to this uh, nature standard. And in the meantime, they have realized uh, more than uh, 50 new McDonald's McDrives that got this uh, certification. Um, here uh, we have another prominent example, uh, the winner of the Solar Decathlon Europe edition in, in 2014 was not only an Italian project, but it uh, is also a Casa Clima Nature uh, project. And of course, we are still uh, proud of this uh, big success. And on the basis of uh, this uh, standard, of this nature standard, uh, we have then developed over the years an entire family of uh, quality seals for the um, application in specific uh, sectors, non-residential sectors. Um, and this allows us also to take into account the specific issues of the interested sectors or structures, uh, or, or for instance, the specific uh, operation issues and processes. Uh, so we're talking about also logistics, waste treatment, uh, mobility issues, uh, soft factors, and uh, things like that. Um, Klima Hotel is, for instance, a certification for sustainable uh, hotels. Uh, you know, tourism, tourism is uh, uh, a very important industry in Italy, uh, and uh, sustainable tourism is becoming more and more a trend, in particular also in our region. Uh, here we see uh, Klima Hotel uh, in the Dolomites. Then we have uh, Casa Clima Welcome. Um, this uh, quality seal is, uh, let's say, the little uh, sister, if you like, of the Clima Hotel label for smaller structures such as uh, bed and breakfast accommodations. Uh, this one here is um, uh, a certified agriturismo in, uh, in Tuscany, for instance. Uh, work and life is a quality seal for office buildings, uh, like this new uh, Saleva headquarters here in uh, Bolzano. Um, then we have uh, Casa Clima Wine, which is a label for sustainable wineries. Uh, as you know, wine is uh, a major sector in the Italian uh, food industry. Uh, the San Paolo Winery in Montalcino, for instance, is using the Clima Wine certification for the sustainability marketing. And on the right, uh, uh, you can see our label on the back of, uh, of a bottle of Brunello di Montalcino. This is uh, an, an excellent example of a successful uh, co-marketing in the field of uh, sustainability. And uh, finally, we have uh, uh, the Casa Clima School Standard. Uh, this is a sustainability certification for schools and kindergarten. And uh, for uh, all these uh, sustainability seeds we have uh, seen, uh, we distinguish um, three steps of uh, certification. Uh, the first one is the pre-certification on a project level. Um, then we have uh, in a second step, the certification itself and the project is realized and when all the, the requirements uh, of the standards are met. And finally, we, ha we have then uh, the periodic um, recertification. Uh, and this recertification addresses all aspects related to the operation of the structure and to the requirements uh, that have to be maintained over time or that may change over time um, for remaining uh, certified. So thanks, Dr. Santa. So we learned that, you know, basically the, there are a lot of different systems. It's not just one system. and We can apply to almost all the topology of buildings. Now, in even looking at the Q&A, uh, you know, questions coming from mm -hmm. the participants, the first actually question that we received was about uh, the importance of certifying architectural heritage and looking at existing buildings. Mm -hmm. So it's nice when McDonald does, uh, uh, you know, approach you for new uh, buildings, but what's mm -hmm. happening when we have to look at the sustainability goals applied to existing structure and existing buildings? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, you're right. Until now, we've talked uh, mainly about new construction or, or construction, or even nearly zero energy buildings. Um, however, when we are looking at the building stock, um, as for instance, uh, this one here, which uh, is, is the uh, existing building stock in Italy, we can see that our new buildings uh, are representing only a relative small uh, percentage of all buildings. Uh, in Canada, the situation is probably a little bit different. Uh, in Italy in particular, but uh, also in, in, in the rest of Europe, however, the main challenge is therefore not so much to build a new nearly zero energy building. The main uh, challenge is to improve the energy performance of existing buildings uh, and to handle the enormous uh, heritage we have uh, in Italy. And for this field, uh, we have developed a, a special certification guideline, uh, the so-called uh, Casa Clima R, retrofitting refurbishment uh, standard. Uh, here, the main objective is to identify the existing um, let's say improvement level of every single building and to implement then uh, an optimal level, not a maximum, an optimal level of energy efficiency at optimal cost. This is very important, a very important concept. Um, and uh, we are trying to, to take into account all the specific characteristics, also the existing qualities, uh, for instance, of a historical building, uh, as we have it in this case, uh, that have to be uh, maintained. Uh, or uh, this is another uh, example. This uh, building uh, is in the in the heart of Torino. Uh, you may you might recognize the Mole Antonelliana uh, in, in, in Torino. Uh, but uh, first of all, this this quality seal, this this uh, Casa Clima R standard, is thought to be, uh, let's say, a good practice, uh, a good uh, guideline uh, for planners in order to avoid frequent uh, retrofitting mistakes. Um, for instance, the accentuation of thermal bridges uh, when you are uh, changing the windows uh, or uh, condensation problems when you're, for instance, working with an inside insulation and, and things like that. Um, the standard um, was in first place, uh, however, not um, developed for historical buildings. Uh, we have many historical buildings uh, um, that have been certified, uh, but the, the, the main objective uh, is um, or the, the, the many and very inefficient buildings uh, erected in the 60s, in the 70s, uh, in the city of Bolzano, for instance, we recently applied this uh, retrofitting standard uh, to 36,000 square meters of social housing. Uh, in this case, it was possible to reduce the primary energy consumption uh, by 60% and to improve at the same time also the comfort uh, conditions in the apartment significantly by the installation, for instance, of uh, triple glazed windows, by the installation of decentralized mechanical ventilation solutions and, and, and other technical uh, solutions. And also from the, uh, from the an architectural point of view, uh, we have seen a significant uh, improvement. Unfortunately, I do not have here an image, a picture, how this uh, building uh, uh, looked uh, before. Yes, and uh, to promote, uh, let's say, this important field of energy retrofitting of existing buildings, uh, we offer uh, the so-called Casa Clean Energy Check. Uh, this is a low-cost um, consulting uh, service um, done on site. Uh, this uh, energy check aims to advise owners about the most convenient uh, retrofitting measures uh, for their homes. Uh, and uh, of course, we inform people also about uh, available uh, subsidies. Uh, the service itself, the energy check itself, uh, is also in part funded um, by our region. And uh, I can say that this, uh, it is very well accepted uh, by the citizens. So thanks, Dr. Santa. Um, going, you know, moving forward with your presentation and also taking advantage of a few extra questions we already received. It. There is curiosity uh, among the participants about the process, the cost of testing, and what is the steps that typically are implied in the uh, getting the new certification for a building. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could expand on, you know, the challenge of the certification and, you know, what are the mm -hmm. implication of it? Yes, the question uh, about uh, the costs, uh, maybe not so much of the certification. So we are a public uh, certification system, so uh, our the certification fees are, are, are really very uh, low. Uh, but we are mainly talking about uh, the costs of, of the measures. 
the retrofitting measures or, or, or the, the if you're talking about new buildings uh, to, uh, the costs related um, to, 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 to the technical standards. So uh, we always uh, aimed um, not to focus only on a, on a few important uh, buildings or, or architectural landmarks as, as, as other um, international rating systems do. Uh, we uh, want, and we have also the mission to, to change a significant part of the building uh, sector in order to really achieve our goals. And this is also why we have uh, always tried to, to combine sustainability with cost efficiency in order to be an ambitious yeah, uh, a standard, but at the same time, also an affordable uh, building standard accessible uh, for everyone, at least in our um, region. Uh, also here, it is uh, important uh, in my eyes to balance very good the economic, the social and the environmental uh, sustainability. And the quote uh, we see on, on this slide uh, describes quite well uh, our approach in the definition also of our, of our standards. Uh, we believe that everything should be made as simple as possible, uh, but not simpler. Uh, so affordable building standards are uh, for sure an issue. Also in our uh, region, uh, prices are rising rapidly. Um, but if we look at the development of the construction costs, uh, for instance, in the field of social housing, so these are the specific uh, construction costs uh, for uh, in the field of social housing, then we see um, that uh, the introduction of the mandatory Casa Clima standards, the, the class C, the class B in 2011, the, the class A in, in 2070 and so on, uh, has never significantly affected the specific construction costs. So it's um, all about spending better. It's not uh, about spending more. So, uh, Dr. Santa, so basically we are saying, you know, and, and this is really a big advantage of Casa Clima compared to alternative system we have seen uh, getting popularity in uh, uh, international sustainable building practice. One of the big advantage of Casa Clima compared to, you know, LEED or ASHRAE standards or a lot of other actually mm -hmm. entities is that Casa Clima is a public agency. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could expand on uh, the, you know, the fact that really there is a lot of attention to the public and there is really significant attention to how we train professionals, general contractors and people working on the site on the value of this certification. Yes, uh, on the one hand, um, the, the, uh, uh, a part uh, of the success of Casa Clima is for sure due to the fact that we are a public independent certification uh, body, uh, that uh, we have no commercial interests. Um, um, and on the other hand, I have uh, um, to say also uh, that uh, one secret uh, for the success of Casa Clima has been for sure uh, to have on board from the very beginning all the important players and stakeholders. So. Uh, the today's uh, standard uh, is a result of the, um, I would say, of, of the common effort uh, for quality uh, done by the entire construction industry, by us, of course, as, as a team agency, but also by the designers, by the craftsmen, by the construction uh, companies. And uh, you mentioned the, the training and, and the knowledge transfer. This is, uh, has been uh, essential uh, for this development. Uh, training and knowledge transfer is, uh, is uh, really essential for putting these, these building standards into practice and for improving at the same time and for developing over the years the standard uh, itself. So we have trained uh, uh, over the years more than 40,000 planners and practitioners and only this way it uh, has been in the end possible, uh, be possi been possible to grow and uh, to become uh, better together. So it's uh, not only uh, because we are a public agency and because we have the best standards, uh, Casa Clima is uh, a success story, uh, not only for us, but also for our, uh, for the entire uh, building industry or for our building industry. Um, Casa Clima became quickly also an export hit for many companies uh, and also for designers, which are working in the US or in, in, in China or somewhere else. Uh, not only in Italy. And another uh, example um, is the, the Klima House Trade Fair, uh, which has become over the last 18 years the leading trade fair for sustainable construction, not only in Italy, uh, but also uh, beyond. 
As I already said um, at the beginning, um, we certify not only entire buildings, but also building products uh, in order to continuously uh, improve the quality level of, of these building, building components. Uh, and on the other hand, we can only implement our standards if such products, such solutions are available on the market. So uh, this is essential. So it's, uh, we need all to be team players. Um, we have, um, for instance, quality seals uh, for windows, uh, for uh, doors. Um, we have a quality seal for mechanical ventilation systems. Here you see uh, also how our label is visualizing the main features of this uh, category of, uh, of products. Currently, we are working on uh, a new quality label for heat pumps that will be available uh, soon. And uh, all these quality seals um, are made for the building industry, uh, but they are, of course, also intended to be a decision uh, support for builders and for designers when they are selecting the products to be used uh, in their project. So thanks, Dr. Sanda. I think actually the participants are getting the sense of the multi uh, series of activities that uh, really you perform. It's not just a certification for buildings, new or existing buildings, but there is really a sense of community that is part mm -hmm. of the Casa Clima mission. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember even 10 years ago, I used it to actually read the journal of Casa Clima. And so could you also expand a bit on all these uh, other uh, possibility that even beyond today's seminar, people could uh, keep uh, an eye on? in order mm -hmm. to get more familiarity with your approach. Yes, you're absolutely right. So involving people, sensitizing, awareness raising is very important uh, for both the technicians, the professionals, as well as for the builders and for the, for the citizens. Uh, so we are running uh, a lot of initiatives in the field of communication and uh, information. Um, we have, um, for instance, our own magazine, uh, we are serving almost all internet, um, web and social media channels in order to, to reach our uh, different uh, target groups in the best uh, possible way. So you can find us in, in internet on the various uh, platforms and channels. Um, we have many initiatives uh, like uh, congresses, uh, international congresses, or for instance, also the Casa Clima Tour. This is a roadshow to promote the Casa Clima standards, our standards, uh, and uh, where we uh, try to deal with uh, all the current and um, also future issues uh, in the field of uh, sustainable um, construction. A very interesting um, communication and, and also sensitizing instrument is uh, our Casa Clima Board. Uh, with uh, this uh, golden cube um, you see here in, in the background uh, of this slide. Um, we are awarding every year the best projects uh, that have been uh, certified. Uh, one prize is always awarded by the audience through an online voting. Uh, for this purpose, we developed uh, this, uh, this web portal, uh, uh, minus uh, awards. Uh, dot it uh, you are all invited to visit uh, this website you can see um, there you can have their uh, look on all the candidates and also uh, on the awarded uh, awarded projects of this year's and of the of the last editions and i have to say that uh, this is really an excellent instrument to promote these uh, best practice examples and to inspire uh, by that uh, other builders and other planners uh, to follow uh, these uh, best practice examples so it's getting actually clear that there are multiple activities that uh, Casa Clima support uh, and delivers. And one of actually the activity that is uh, been happening over the last few years uh, for Casa Clima as for other agencies that are looking at sustainability assessment is that often we are realizing that making one building sustainable is probably not enough mm -hmm. to push forward the idea and the agenda of a sustainable uh, planet. So I wonder if in conclusion, before we leave the floor for extra question, you could uh, mm -hmm. just uh, make a very quick uh, you know, snapshot of the activity you do beyond the building level. Um, yes, um, as you said, uh, over the years, we have uh, continuously expanded our uh, radius of action. Um, we have developed, for instance, uh, a program called uh, Comune Clima, which uh, uh, means in Italian climate municipality. Uh, essentially, we uh, extended um, our uh, vision of a sustainable development from the building to the district level and uh, to the city. 
in this program, buildings are, of course, still important. But here we have a lot of other action and evaluation areas, as for instance, uh, spatial planning, mobility issues, all the public infrastructures and uh, facilities, uh, facilities, all the services uh, for the, the citizens and so on. And this program is designed to support uh, the municipalities on an operational level in the elaboration and in the uh, concrete implementation of measures in, uh, in all these fields. So the program, uh, the program works um, as a continuous improvement process. One central element is the introduction of the systematic energy uh, and environmental management uh, system. Uh, many municip municipalities uh, lack of such a, let's say, a structured uh, approach. Uh, once a um, municipality has implemented uh, certain sustainability goals after joining this, this program, we call it program, uh, it gets uh, also the Comune Clima certification. Here we see uh, some of the awarded uh, municipalities, uh, and these municipalities also use this certification in their sustainability uh, marketing, of course, uh, in particular those ones um, uh, who are uh, located in the, in the tourism uh, hotspots. And uh, we developed also another initiative, uh, Clima Factory, which is uh, structured in a very similar way to the, to the previous one. And with this uh, program, uh, we would like to support in particular all the small and medium sized enterprises we have in Italy in becoming more sustainable, more efficient, and by that uh, also more competitive. This is a very, very important uh, issue uh, in this context. Uh, SMEs usually lack the necessary uh, knowledge, as we know, uh, or simply the time also to track down and to implement the savings potentials in their, uh, in their own uh, company. Uh, here we are focusing, of course, uh, on the main cross-cutting technologies, such as, uh, I don't know, uh, compressed air, pumps, drives, uh, process heat and cooling, ICT, and, and things like that. Uh, the, program, uh, the program logic is uh, more or less uh, the same as the one we have seen before. Also here we have the introduction of an energy management system uh, in, the, in the companies. Uh, and the introduction of a continuous improvement process. Uh, so the principle is the plan, do, check, act uh, circle. Uh, and also here, one, uh, once um, the company uh, has uh, implemented the, the required measure, uh, it gets uh, certified. Um, and also for these two uh, programs, for the Comune Clima program and for the Clima Factory initiative, we have developed uh, several supporting tools so similar to the ones we have seen before for the building certification, such as the software for energy accounting, uh, guidelines, various checklists, uh, training units, of course, and, and uh, stuff like that. So thanks to Sanda for the clear answer to, you know, the different aspects of your system. Uh, I'm checking on the QA. I remind every participant that uh, you are welcome to put any kind of question or curiosities to Dr. Santa. So specifically, I, I wonder actually if uh, we could just expand a bit on the challenge of applying Casa Clima in Canada. Um, you know, what are the main elements that you see uh, that could, you know, help yourself in expand and help Canadian in taking advantage of your already quite wide experience with sustainable construction. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, we would be very interested uh, in uh, um, if it would be possible to establish uh, um, cooperation with uh, with Canada. Um, um, we want to push uh, over the last years, uh, we, we, we try to do so the internationalization of, of uh, the Casa Clima standard. So uh, today we have already some realized projects in Spain, in Greece, in Switzerland, in Austria, in Germany, so uh, in, in Europe uh, mainly. Uh, currently we're working also on, on, on the certification of, of some projects in uh, Brazil. Uh, but uh, now we would like to do um, to, or to approach this uh, internationalization of, of the Casa Clima system in a more structured way. And for sure, uh, the North American market uh, would be very interesting uh, for us. I don't actually think that uh, we would have uh, big problems. Of course, we will uh, have to check the, your, your building codes or the building codes of the single provinces uh, you have, but also in Europe, we have more or less the same situation. So you have always uh, to adapt to the local uh, situation. Uh, 
I guess the, 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 our standard is fine also for the, the Canadian uh, climate. So um, here you um, see um, um, this, 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 uh, this picture of the Refugio Sassonero. Um, this is um, the, uh, it's a climate house in class A. It's uh, the highest altitude has a climate. It is located at 3,026 meters above uh, sea levels. So from, uh, from that point of view, uh, I don't think that we would have uh, big problems in, in, in bringing uh, our standards uh, to, to Canada. On the other hand, we uh, have a lot of, uh, and many years of experience also with cold climates. So we have certifications set before in Greece and uh, Sicily uh, and now also in, in Brazil. Of course, uh, we have to consider uh, in doing this, uh, as I said before, uh, the normative framework of uh, the single in the single uh, markets, the, the, the climate, uh, we, we or, or also the, the let's say in the prior uh, prioritizing the, the 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 objectives and 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 uh, the most important challenges we have to have a closer look, of course, uh, on, on the single situation. But as I said before, um, we would be very happy if we could establish a cooperation and if uh, we could find also partners uh, in Canada to promote uh, as a clima system also in, uh, in Canada and in, in general in, in North uh, America. So, uh, so I think we this. have all, all uh, already today, all, all we need to, to, to put in place uh, more sustainable uh, constructions. Uh, thanks, Dr. Sanda. I simply want to kind of challenge you with an extra question around the same topic. Uh, you know, we can definitely, you know, help you eventually also thanks to the Instituto to look at bridges <laughs> between Italy and Canada for Clima House uh, certification process. Uh, will you expect the challenge to be more, I would say, you know, on the side of the technical training of people? Or would you say the challenge will be more on the products that your system typically, uh, you know, requires construction to use? Yes, uh, I would say both. So um, we, of course, will have to understand um, all the details uh, of, the, of the local building codes. Uh, we have to understand also uh, how far or how distant uh, is uh, is the level A of the designers, of the planners, of the, the, the practitioners, of the craftsmen, and B, uh, how distant are we or how distant is the building market in Canada from our standards. So uh, we will have to, to, to analyze if there is a gap and uh, then we will have to close it. Uh, that means that on the one hand, we will uh, have an, an, our uh, standard that has the flexibility to do that. Uh, we will have to close uh, the, the, the normative gap maybe. On the other hand, we will adapt uh, or have to adapt our standard uh, to, the, um, to, to the market situation, to the availability of certain products uh, or not. Um, but we have seen this uh, also in, in our region. So um, when I look back, uh, what uh, was the situation here at 10 or 15 years ago? Ago, um, uh, a triple glazed window was not the standard. And if you ask uh, 10 years ago, uh, uh, a manufacturer, uh, if you if it could uh, deliver you a triple glazed window, the costs were um, really uh, enormously high. Today, this kind of product has exactly the same cost. It had uh, uh, um, a double uh, glazed um, window had 10 years ago. So the, the market uh, adapts uh, relatively quickly. And this is also, um, from my point of view, one of the opportunities also of the operators, uh, of uh, the, the, the manufacturers of components and building products to adapt quickly to these standards because, because it can make a difference on the market. Um, the other, uh, let's say, um, big issue is, uh, of course, as I said before, training. Of course, you have 
to start uh, with dissemination activities, you have to start with the knowledge transfer, you have to present uh, these standards, uh, the technical details, uh, the, the, the also the, the planning instruments and tools, uh, modeling, but I don't, I, I don't think that this will be really a, a, a big challenge. Maybe we are in Europe a little bit uh, favored in terms that we have already mandatory C um, uh, certification and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, building physics uh, doesn't change uh, so much from Italy to Canada. Um, I totally agree, Dr. Santa. I think actually, uh, having used your system in the past, I think that's really the key aspect is that the physics remains the same. Uh, climatic wise, Bolzano, where this system was originally created, mm -hmm. clearly has a lot of similarity with Canada. And you know we need to start practicing these kind of opportunities for sharing activities. So I think we are running out of time. Uh, I also think we have uh, you know addressed uh, most of the questions, but also I see many other questions that we cannot answer due to lack of time. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that we agreed that Dr. Santa will be available as well as myself even beyond today talk uh, through mm -hmm. the Instituto for any act. Uh, uh, question or mm -hmm. kind of curiosity of the participants. Uh, I wonder if uh, Alessandro, the director of the Instituto, wants uh, uh, to join us back, uh, you know, just for final remarks. Um, I really thank again Dr. Santa for the nice talk and I hope uh, you find uh, uh, the chat very interesting and that this will be just the beginning of a collaboration between Italy and Canada. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, Umberto. Thank you very much, uh, Ulrich Santa. It has been really an intriguing uh, presentation and really, I would say, compelling. I think it's uh, extremely interesting to see the, all the process that has been put in place by Casa Clima uh, from a Canadian perspective. And I'm sure, and I hope, I mean, this is also one of the one of the reasons we decided to organize this, um, this uh, webinar to create an opportunity to bridge Italy and Canada. Again, I mean, this, this is the mission of the Istituto Italiano di Cultura and of the diplomatic mission to create opportunity of collaboration, opportunity of uh, co open conversations that can uh, bridge. And, and Italy and Canada has so many things in common and, and in particular, I think uh, that specific area in Italy that is also share Climate, climate conditions that are somehow similar to the Canadians. So I'm pretty sure. I've even seen a question uh, in the Q&A from Cyprus. Uh, someone is interesting, interested in having, uh, so this is the one of the advantages in, in going global with this kind of uh, webinars that you can have followers from. And if I can speak on your behalf, I'm sure Casa Clima and the director Ulrich Santa and his staff uh, will be available for any kind of questions to, to be answered and, and open to, to receive uh, inputs and, and, and questions, as I, as I say. So it's always um, said that we don't have the time to, to elaborate more and to, and to welcome all more, even more questions, but I'm glad we had the numbers audience and had a good number of uh, attendees following us. Um, this um, registration, this uh, webinar will, is, has been recorded, so it will be available on the, on the YouTube channel of the Instituto. I invite you to check uh, the, the website, the Casa Clima website. It's a very clear and very easy to navigate. So with a lot of information, with more uh, videos, uh, with more information. And of course, with all the information regarding the, the context. So that's it. I'm really, really happy. And I think it has been a, a success. Thank you again, uh, Umberto Berardi for, from Ryerson University, from leading this conversation. And again, thank you to Ulrich Santa and uh, Casa Clima, Clima House uh, for being available. And uh, it's not uh, uh, un addio as we say, it's just un arrivederci soon, uh, I hope. I also would like in conclusion to thank uh, the Italian Trade Commission, <clears throat> Matteo Picariello is the director who has been uh, also instrumental in, in promoting this uh, webinar. Of course, the Italian embassy and uh, the staff at the embassy, and of course, His Excellency the Ambassador Claudio Tafuri for his opening remarks. 
And last but not least, uh, all the stuff at EUS Tutor, Glory Di Folco, that uh, helped us from the, all the technical aspects of the webinar. So I remind you also to check out the website of the Instituto. We have more webinars coming up in the next uh, days. Thank you again and hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much again. Bye for everyone.